Me recording. Okay, so you guys, I can say that officially, officially, we finished what the chapter, what chapter, uh, yeah. whatever, <laughs> I forgot. Chapter four, right? I think four or five, right? So we are done with combinational circuit. We learned that one of the things I want you to put in your consideration, this lecture is recorded, so I'm telling you now. When I say design, that means you do your best in terms of optimization. Again, what does it mean? Optimization. That means, you know, it's not just designing, designing anything and it run. It has to be optimized. That makes sense? With well steps, well, well clear steps. If you have something designed with well clear steps, because you know the design rules is making everything what? Perfect. As much as you can. But that means you, you show me that you are trying it. It's not just like, you know, you know what? You want something is running. Okay, it's running. Make sense? Okay, so let me grab the. Go today. Oh. Okay, how, how many of you heard about uh, sequential circuits? Before sequential circuit, did you guys go through the problems that it was written in behind in the book and you know you found something you would like me to do it or go through it with you or something? Did you have a chance? Um. I forgot where I put it, so I think I'll just ask you after. You have something? Yeah, but I, I'll find it later. I can show you later. Okay, so should we start or should we wait? What do you think? I'm fine. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You just, just continue class first. Okay, so I can just go now and leave this, and then, you know, if you find it, we can go through. Okay, so, you know, we are talking about sequential. circuit design. So when we say sequential circuit design, we need to know what does it mean sequential? The meaning. Elements we should use on the circuit design for such a kind of what type of circuit, right? Also, we need to understand, uh, when we say the elements, we have to understand three different things. Truth table, characteristic table, they call it sometimes mistake table, and something is called excitation table. So we're gonna learn in the element that's used in sequential circuit, it's not like uh, combinational. Combinational, you have input, you have output, I'm done. The only, the only time is, is actually included in the combinational circuit is what the response time of every single gate level, right? Like how much time this gate will take to process the outputs, to, to process the input to produce outputs, stuff like that, you know what I mean? That makes sense? Then, we're gonna learn something in the design called um, how to uh, finite state machine. Finite state machine. And you know, what type of finite machine we're gonna have? We have something is called melee, something is called more. And what is this? And you know, what is the difference between of them? Then, you know, we're gonna learn, um, Combining element together is gonna to build something is called a register. And we're gonna also learn how can you build um, counters and different type of counters, like you know, up, counter, down, counter, and so on. We're going to learn also logical operation. On the level of register, what does it mean? 
you shift you rotate what does it mean so something is called shifting right or shifting left and there's something called rotate right and rotate left how can you build such a kind of thing so that's this this chapter or this series of chapters is basically a really dense in term of what including real time was what was our circuit okay what application we can see was uh, seen for sequential circuit you know uh traffic light when we say traffic light right you know, when, you know, there was a big sensors in the top, you know, handed by the traffic light, you know, it's starting you know, checking the traffic jam between of the intersects and stuff like this. And then, you know, coming to a conclusion, you know, we have to turn this one to red, but the other one will be, uh, you know, green, then you will move. And then a timer will be moving on, then, you know, automatically it will move to the green, then you will move forward and so on, right? So the timer, that means timing. So that means it's a sequential circuit. Because, you know, what is the timer is a counter. Okay, so sequential circuit, it's basically, you can consider it as a following. You can consider it as a combinational circuit. In the combinational circuit, we push input and we receive output after a certain amount of time of the critical pass, which is the longest pass, right? But sequential, it's also combinational circuit pushing input and output with what? With feedback control. What does it mean? Your first input will go here, right? It will process the output. Then the second patch of the input will go here, but the previous output, it has to be somehow delayed. So we need an element to delay it. So basically here is what element of storage, or you can call it as a memory. And this is the sequential circuit, you said? No, the whole entire thing is sequential. Oh, OK. But you know, I'm using one of the elements. Look at this elements of the sequential, OK? So any, com any sequential circuit, it's a kind of a combinational with a feedback of the sequential elements, okay? Make sense? Now we need to see what is this element. You know? I need to know what is this element, right? So a historical designer didn't know what is what exactly you should do, you know? So in the beginning, they start building something from the combinational circuit and they call it latch. You call it what? Latch. Sounds good. And of course, they are using the most popular thing that I mentioned to you for industry perspective, NOR and NAND for building such a kind of element. So the first attempt of building sequential element, it came by producing latch. Okay. Then they found out there's problem with latch. We're gonna discuss it. But you know, at least you know we started with latch, right? Then they came into another high order modern element. They call it what? Flip flop. Flip flop. How many of the flip flop we're going to study? Four. One is called SR flip flop. One is called JK flip flop. One is called D flip flop. One is called T flip flop. So how many we have? One, two, three, four. Okay, so look what we're gonna study. We're gonna study latch, right? And I have a news for you. Flip flops are using latch. So see, you know the, how the hierarchy, we're gonna study latch. Then, you know, we'll start seeing what we're gonna add to on the latch. So we're gonna make it flip flop. Then we're gonna study between of those SR, TJK, whatever. And after we kill it with studying it with implementation and everything, right? We're gonna learn how to convert from one to the other to see how we are comfortable with understanding the flip flop. So, you know, 
the third in the mission, we're gonna go through it. They're gonna be converting from one to the other flip flop. Okay, so maybe I can stop here about the historical thing because I can tell you the whole historical thing in one or two lectures and then you know, let's realize it one by one. Okay, sounds good. I'm gonna tell you a story about something. I'm gonna repeat it later when I go flip flop, but you know, I want just you to know it, right? When I say I need a timer, that means I need a source of time. I need something to tell me time, like a base, right? We do something is called clock. How many of you heard about something is called crystal? I have crystal oscillator. Yes, sir. So crystal oscillator. The crystal oscillator is a source of the clock. Is using whatever you guys learn from the RC circuit. So in the RC, I'm a charging, I'm discharging, I'm a charging, I'm discharging, right? So imagine that, you know, I'm doing like this. I'm a charging, I'm discharging, I'm a charging, I'm discharging, I'm a charging, I'm discharging, right? But who is actually affecting on this with the time constant? Do you guys remember? So that was called time constant. Tau is equal R times C. Right? And by pl playing with this time constant, we can come into another thing. We can shape it to be like this. And this called what? Train of pulses. A strain of pulses. Square. But, yeah? This is a square wave. Yes, sir. I know what I did, but you know, I don't want this. Ah. A train of pulses, but it has a specification. So there is a specification, a spec for this train of pulses. What is the spec we should know? Okay. The spec is follow. There is something here, it's called duty cycle. So look, this is uh, one piece of the train of pulses, right? So that's not me. Oh, that's me. Oh, that's me. <laughs> okay. So the train of pulses, right? So look at this. There is a duration here. Later on, I will see that it will be repeated. Imagine this is equal T, this is equal T. So the train of pulses, every single pulse, which is on off, right? It would be the same size of time, same width, okay? So that's one of the things to say this is clock, okay? To say this is clock, you know, this is a period of time is repeated, it, repeating it, repeated it. The second thing, this is on, this is off. So the T on, is equal T of equal T divided by two. If you find something like this, if you find something like this, that means you're, you are in front of what clock, which is have been produced by what crystal oscillator. This is our source of what time. That's actually what is the special thing about sequential circuit. Later, we're gonna tie this with the rest of the element to understand what is this actually exactly doing. So again, you know, I like to repeat. What is the most important thing to learn these days for the sequential circuit? The elements, which will help me to provide sequential circuit. So this elements started with what some things called latches. This latches is actually poor in the design that it doesn't have any time. Then latches with something sourcing time, a cold flip-flop. Then they have four of them. 
SR, historical it was SR in the beginning, then they came to JK, and after that they moved to D, and then they moved to T. So historically, you know, SR, and then you know, JK, then you know, D, then T. What we need as a first step to learn, how can you identify the characteristics and the whole in, in front of table with the elements that you know we're gonna study as a truth table, excitation table, and the people say in some books, a state, a state table, some other books and resources, they call it characteristic table. This is our first, first you know, common ground thing about sequential. Once we are very good and strong in the muscles about it, we move forward to the most heavy stuff. Sounds reasonable? Everybody on, on the same page? Yep. Super. Yes. So let's let's leave the clock. We're gonna turn it back to the clock, but let's see, you know, what is the first element that people ever think about it. So people came and say, you know, since we are in a binary, right? So the device we have to build is gonna be set. Reset. So fill it with zero, fill it with one, or the reverse, it doesn't matter, right? So it's set, reset. So the first latch, the design latch, it has two inputs, S, R, and what is the output will be? It will be the output and the invert of the output. So it will be Q, you complement. So now we are narrowing down and we starting learning in details what is latch, right? So any latch started like this, S, R as an input and the output and the inverse of the output. Call it Q, you know, every, all the books call it Q, you know, it doesn't matter if you call it Muhammad, it doesn't matter, you know? Call it Muhammad, Muhammad complement, it doesn't matter. You know, call it, you know, Juan, you know, call it, you know, Melvin and Melvin compliment. It doesn't matter to me, you know. I just wanted to let you know that, you know, it's not stick about the idea, but, you know, I want you to think about it, right? Uh, okay, so now we need to think about how this latch is a storing element. Because, you know, we said in the combination of circuits, we have an element here to store. And we said, we need this element. So we make the whole circuit what working with time. So we are looking for about the storage, right? So what is internal inside the latch? So we have SR latch designed using NAND. And we're gonna start with this and see how it looks like. Then we will move forward to SR latch using NOR, right? Everybody's following me, right? So let's go with SR latch with NAND, right? I want to put something here in a side, so gonna make it easy for me. What we gonna put in a side, the NAND to stable, you know, you know, we have to bring all your tools in your hand while you're working. So gonna be X, Y, those are the two inputs for any NAND, right? And what is the output? Let's call it F, right? How many states this table would be covering four? So one, two, three, four. So far so good. Then it's an N, that means N negates, right? Because I don't remember NAND, honestly. So, you know, even I've been working in this field for a long time, I just say N and I flip it, you know? I don't waste my time, you know? So look, you know, and that means the last one will be one, the rest of it will be zero. Flip it, it's gonna be one, 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 zero. I'm done. So, you know, here, do you guys agree? Now, let's see what is the fancy, fancy, crazy thing about element. When we say we are storing, somehow we need feedback, something feedback. So we store, right? It's a loop in the backwards, right? So I guess that, you know, I have here S and I have here R. Then I will have two elements since, you know, I have also two outputs, right? So I can say that, you know, here is my Q, here is my Q complement. Then I will use different color. So I will use here, for instance, NAND. 
thin. And literally, I can extend the line to be like this. But I don't see any feedback, <laughs> right? The feedback I can think about is following. Every NAND, it has two inputs, right? So what I can think about is that, you know, I can be crazy and say, if I see negation, I can put it with the inverse. And if I don't see the one, I will put it with the inverse, right? So what I can think about like this, reset. So that means I'm basing to zero. If I'm everything is up to five and everything is perfectly fine, right? So I can put what Q there like this. Then, voila, then, you know, this is Q complement. That's complement and I set, so we flip it, you know, <laughs> so it's gonna be like this. Guess what we have in front of us? SR NAND latch. We are done. We finished the lecture, you know? I'm just joking. Okay, anyway, now we need to see the fancy part about this, right? We need to see how it works. Everybody agree with me? So I'm gonna make a table, like normal table. Right, I have here S and I have here R and one, two, three, four. How many output I have? I have the output and the negation of the output, right? Zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. What is this table we are expecting to be output of it? We need to see who is it storing and who is not storing. So we're gonna do something a little bit crazy than normal table, you know? What is this crazy thing? We will push something and later on we'll push something else and see whether that the thing it will give me the same output or not. That's called a story. You agree? So let's think about it. Okay. So I am sitting. So that means I'm not resetting. Right? If I am sitting, I'm not resetting. <laughs> that makes sense. So I will go back to my lovely table and see what is going on, right? So if I reset in one of the NAND, no matter what will be the second one, the output will be one. Do you guys agree? Did you see this thing? So in that case, if this is zero, no matter what is this guy is, this output will be equal what? One, yeah. right? But this one will go here. <laughs> All right, it's flipped, right? So one and one, what is the output? Zero. Zero. Yeah, it is correct. See, you know, if, if Q is zero, the negation is one. Look at the fun. It is fun, right? Anyway, let's try it. So, you know, here, you know, so we said S is one and R is zero. So basically, you know, we are zero and one. Everybody agree with me? Okay. Now we're gonna do the reverse. So, you know, let's use a different color. So if S is equal zero, R is equal one, right? So let's see how it works. The gentleman has zero, will be bringing one. So this guy is equal one, right? That one will go here boom, to be here. But you know, this is one, one with one, the output will be what in this case, zero, right? So it's flipping that, right? So that means, you know, gonna be here one, zero. Now, the most important crazy part, this is the most important crazy part I would like you to learn, okay? So I'm gonna clear up everything I made here in terms of number, shite, I'm sorry. Boom, 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 boom. I said, I'm gonna clean, not remove. <laughs> anyway, so I can make it like this, All right? Now, I need to see what will happen with these two guards. Do you guys agree? Okay, let's see what will happen then. I need to know, you know, I'm even curious, you know? So, hmm. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, if I put here zero and I put here zero, 
if I put here zero and I put here zero, what will happen? I think that will be one and this is one, right? Which it doesn't make what? That doesn't make sense. Thank you. So basically, you know, I will go to the conclusion, you know, not used. What does it mean? As a designer, I killed my chances for using all the four states I have by building such a kind of what device. So that means I just have three guys to play with and this gentleman will be out of my consideration because it doesn't make sense. You guys agree with me? So this gentleman yep. by adios. So now I'm gonna go to what? To the other one, one one. But before to go to the other one, which is one one, I have to do something a little bit crazy, you know? Let's see what is this a little bit crazy. I'm gonna pick something which is before it was one and zero. So S is one and R is equal zero, right? So we said, you know, in this case, Q will be equal what? Q will be equal what? Uh, mm -hmm. Zero and one, right? Because there is a feedback that means I can push new input. So imagine that, you know, my Q is equal zero. Look, Q is equal zero. And my Q bar is equal one, right? Let's put here the second input to be one, one. And let's see what will be the output because there is no back, right? So look at this. Now one and one, what the output will be in this case? Zero. Do you guys agree? Then you know one and zero, one and zero, the output will be what? Um, did I make it correct or? Um, what is one and zero? One and zero should be one, right? Should be one. Have you noticed something? Somebody tell me if you observe something. Your storage or your memory? Yes, so let me tell you something. The first input was one and zero. But when I set it up, S is one and R is one, I found the second input forever will be Z11. That means I locked the circuit to give me the same output, which is called what storage, right? So in that case, this is what is storing data. Let's try it with different things, right? So clear up this. Do it again, right? Now I want it to be uh, one and zero. I picked a random output now, right? One and zero, right? So I take this one here. And I take the zero there, right? And I said in the next iteration, I'm gonna make this is equal one and make it equal one, right? So that means I'm looking for the second output coming from this. So the output here is gonna be one zero is what is equal one, and one one it will be zero mm, zero. Have you noticed? So the previous equal next. So that means it's taking it into the point that is storing the. So have you noticed now? So there is one state, the designers and the mathematician who work in this project figure out that you know it can be acting as a storage. So we succeeded in making this working as a storage. Somebody can tell me what is the drawbacks we have? Can you repeat the question? What are the drawbacks we have in such a kind of circuit? uh what if you went from the not used state to the to the storing data state? oh yes that's basically one of the problems that you know we are missing one state the second big problem we have there is no control of time it's just we are stuck so imagine that you know you went in the deadlock this is the kind of a deadlock right if you kept one and one on the s and r 
then you know you are done. You cannot go out of this loop forever until somebody will just flip in the SNR and make it some changes in the switch, right? So it's a very it's a it's a very unique attempt for building something to store data that is not mature enough to say it's a sequential data because sequential that means there is a time aspect will go into it. Everybody agree with me? Yes. So far, whatever I have mentioned until now makes sense. Yeah. Any questions so far? The rest of the nation. Is there any question? Malvin, do you have any question? No, but I have a solution to the uh, clock thing. We just run a clock into the uh, three input NAND gate, right? I will tell you, I will just wait. Okay, wait. sorry. You are killing the thing, you know, that's why. <laughs> anyway, Joe, what do you think? Joseph? Griffin, what do you think? Uh, I think everything makes sense so far, but I think this, this is the simplest one, right? Don't worry, everything is simple in this course, you know. This yeah, is yeah. of course simple, you know. Okay, Jamal, how's it going? Yeah, it makes sense. Good. Okay, so we have a, let me check the rest of the people so we see that you know nobody sleep. Gloria, what do you think? Makes sense? Yeah, everything is making sense so far. So far. Mike. Sarah, Sarah, Jeremy, present. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> okay, London, <laughs> that makes sense. London Lamb, does it make sense? Hello. Yes, it makes sense. What about you, Luai? Uh, I'm doing my best to understand. It makes sense, but I think it's gonna get harder. No, that's not true. Everything's gonna get even easier and easier and easier than that, you know? We're gonna be playing. Okay. Ho ho hopefully that will happen. <laughs> Don't worry. Anyway, so now, you know, we finished the first attempt of building SR NAND latch. So let's see how it works with the no latch. So the null latch will be identical feedback concept, but replacing every NAND with null. Should we do it now and see how it looked like? So we can write here SR NOR based latch. So I'm gonna have NOR. And that's gonna be Q. Here's your latch. Okay. This is no norm. So first step, we're gonna put the two stable of who in the norm, right? So the two, the norm is gonna be X, Y, F, one, two, three, four. So nor that means is or negated right so if we do it like this or everything gonna be one except the first one you flip it so everything gonna be here one zero i'm right yes thank you thank you anyway now we're gonna look to the table of the s or q q complement four latches one two three four Zero one zero one zero zero one one. M zero, M one, M two, M three, because you can make an implementation, right? You can implement stuff. Anyway, now we're gonna do the same trick. If S is equal one, R is equal zero, 
right? So let's look what will be if any of the norms equal one situation, everybody will be equal zero. So that means this is equal zero, right? Then if I take this zero and I put it here, was that zero? So the output will be one. Makes sense, right? So Q in this case is equal zero while the Q bar is equal one. Then I can remove this to be here zero, one, zero, one. Then, you know, if I reset, I, I don't set, right? So the situation will be moving. If there is one here, so they're gonna be zero, that zero will be here, zero is zero, it will be one. So they're gonna be flipped here to be what? We'll finish the first one. Everybody following me? It looks perfect, right? Now we need to see the, the troublemaker who will cause this thing to be what? Unused state. So who is gonna be the troublemaker? Basically the thing that they're gonna give me zeros in it, I believe, or the ones on it. So I believe that troublemaker here was what? Zero, zero. So maybe we can try one, one in this case. So if we have this one, I'm sorry. If you have this one and this one, anything with one output will be zero. Anything with one output to be zero. The Q and the negation of the Q is equal zero. Would you imagine? So what does it mean? It means this is what not used. Sounds good? Now we need to see the usefulness of the S is equal zero, R is equal zero. So in this case, I'm gonna clean up this and I will make a story say that, you know, I have an input, I have an output, and this output is, for instance, you know, zero, uh, zero, one. That's my assumption, my first output, right? So that's zero, one. So I'm gonna write it here to be zero, one. So basically I'm gonna clear up this. So I would say, you know, zero is moving here and one is moving there. Sounds reasonable? Okay. Now I'm gonna set up the configuration of S and R into zero, zero. So in that case, I'm looking for the second output, right? So that's actually the first, I'm looking for the second. So I can make a line like this. And from there I say, when is zero is one, what is the output will be? When is zero and one, the output will be zero. When is zero and zero, the output will be one. So the second, exactly like the first. So conclusion, this circuit, it will be locked to storing elements when it's zero, zero, it's written on the S on R. So they're gonna be what memory element. Or you can write the storing or storing or storing element, whatever you want. Sounds reasonable. Sounds easy, busy, lemon squeezy. Okay. Uh, professor, I have a question. You can have two questions. Okay. So when you um when you're pushing the data through, when you you have that data prior, right? And then you lock it. And is that how it works? It's like a two-step process. Normally you want to talk about how the normal case work, right? You would uh -huh. like to save something, right? So you yeah. do something, which is the first output. And then yeah. you would like to lock it to be forever. So then, you know, you put zero, zero in that case on the SNR, then this okay. output will appear. All right, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so um, if it's clear to everybody, that means I can say congratulations, everybody. Now we are ready to uh, graduate, you know. You can, you know, you don't need to work with me anymore. Okay, now we can actually add in the top of the latch to make control because we cannot control this latch. This latch is crazy, you know, I, I put S on R, S on R, S on R. There is no plug, plugging in, in the, you know, in the, you put it in the wall and then, you know, everything would be working, right? It's basically was based on the S on R, S on R, S on R, right? So we have to add extra aspect, which is enabled. That makes sense? So we have to add enable 
into it. How can we add enable to this? It's not really hard. It's a piece of code. So from now on to the rest of the end of the course, I'm not going to make it SR again, and then, you know, an end, and then lower. I can stick with one of them, right? So let's just move with the... Uh, <sighs> so normally what we can do, we do extended the circuit with the entirely NAND and NOR. It depends on the technology we are using. Do you guys agree? So imagine the following. So, you know, I can go ahead and say like this. This is basically the old design we have, right? But I want to have enabled for this. So what I can do, I can just go ahead like this. So what the extra part we have done, like Melvin when he said he has a solution. That was a solution he meant, right? Yeah, it's one of them. See, he's tricky. You know, I know since I talked to him, you know, he's tricky. You know? Okay, so now, you know, he knows the trick. So it's not a surprise anymore. So basically, you know, to NAND propagated and ended to the thing to enable, it can reduce S star and R star, which is basically the R and S star we made before. Right? Make sense? So we can look to the table of the NANDs, basically. X, Y, one, two, three, three, four. Ah, shizer. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. Then you know F. So we said this is NAND, so everything is ended. So ones, zero, one, you're gonna be here, zero, and then bunch of ones. You know, I have to remember. Okay, so. Uh, um, have you noticed something? When x is equal one, right? The input will be what flipped. The other, uh, the other output will be depend on the input and flipped. Do you agree? So that means you know if this enable is equal one, right? Then you know this guy it will be S complement, R complement. Then you have to be sure how we can play the game with that, right? So pretty much you can do a very nice conclusion. You can make a table like this, say enable S R and next states. Now you are learning new thing. It's called next state. So I'm looking for the next output. Before we say QL, QN, right? So we are learning what is the next. Okay. So here, you know, I have when is zero, and I don't care what is SR is, there is no change will happen. That's aligned with whatever we learned from what? From the NAND, right? Think about it, right? If this one is zero, if this one is zero, no matter what, the output will be one, one, right? And when it's one, one, that mean what? Memory. Let's go back to our thing and see. Look, memory. So let's go here, apply it. Here is zero. So the second no matter will be, if it's zero, if it's one, the output is one. So yay, we can write you and say that, you know, memory or the storing element. Then we will come into the other conclusion that, you know, oh, when we put the blog, you know, put the, you know, the cable into the blog, you know, the, the blogging thing that, you know, in the wall, then, you know, gotta be what four states, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, zero, zero, and then, you know, one, zero, one, zero, one, one. Then this will be the thing that we're gonna play with. 
right? If it's this one, look, 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 right? This is just playing with the gates, right? This is practice for the gates. Okay, I got it. So anyway, we have a mean. Anyway, so we're gonna have here is equal one. So when you have a one here, and when you have a one here, what will happen? The thing will be flat, right? So if it's this zero and this is zero, so that means that zero will move to be one here. This zero will be moving to one here. So that means it's still also what the story. So in that case, it's also what memory. Are you guys following what I'm doing? I'm just playing with gates. Right? Yeah, we're digesting it. Yeah. Anyway, now we have to play, right? So basically, you know, we clear up this so, you know, it will be more recognized for you guys. Then you go in and say that, you know, my S is equal zero. So that means, you know, zero is one. Then, you know, it's going to be what? It's going to be one. And then you know my s uh, my r is equal what one so that means here one and one so that means the output here it will be zero so then you know i have one and zero so s is equal basically the new s is equal one the r is equal zero right so s professor what, what's the input again the input here is like you know uh zero and one here so so s equals zero and r equal one yes sir okay. and the level is one Okay, so in that case, you know, basically this is one and this is zero. So we go back to the table we made. If it's S equal one and R is equal zero, so that's gonna be the output, it's gonna be zero one. So we'll take it here and put it here, zero one. Then the reverse, one zero. Then who else, this one will be what not used. So did you see when we add the enable, what happened? It just confused everybody, but it's still giving you the same thing. Is it clear to everybody? Hello? Yes. So if it's clear, tell me. If it's not clear, don't tell me. I mean, tell me. Yes. Go on. Any question? Yeah, it's clear and easy. See, you know, somebody said, oh, Zachary said it's easy. <laughs> okay, anyway. Now, I'm going to give you some vitamins about, you know, the clock so we can use it for the flip-flops because, you know, we are done. Now, you know, why we need flip-flop because we need the time aspects and also we need to find a solution for this unused state. You know, it's a crisis for us. Okay, so now we have to think about it, right? So first of all, we need time. So that means we need clock. But in the beginning of the lecture, I, did, I told you what is the clock look like, right? But I'm gonna tell you something about the clock is crazy. So the clock, it was like this. It's on, off, on, uh, uh, sorry, on, off, then on, off, and you're yeah, moving like this forever. That makes sense? Here? is equal here, is equal here, like that. That's called T, 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 right? So it's periodically changed. So there are three facts I need to tell you. First fact, there is something that's called frequency. What is this frequency? Frequency is equal one over T. Frequency is one over two. And that means the rate of repeating the thing. So the rate of repeating this, how fast I'm repeating the same pattern. That's the frequency. And the unit for the frequency is called Hertz, HZ. Pretty much they write it like this, uppercase, lower. Uppercase, lower. Okay, so example. T is equal four nanosecond. So that means the T on is equal to T off is equal T divided by two, that means two nanosecond. 
If this is the case, then this P is represented by clock duration. That's called clock duration. So that's called clock duration. So what is the clock duration? The on plus the off of the time and repeat it. Okay? I have a question. Yes, sir. So is there a reason why the duty cycle has to be 50%? Or... It is. Because you know the second part will come, which is what the uh, the edge. Because of the edge, because there is something called event. So that's you know wait, you know I'm gonna tell you the truth anyway. So now, if I would like to calculate my frequency, I will go ahead and say that you know f is equal one over four nanoseconds. One over four is point twenty five. Nanosecond is ten power minus nine. So you're gonna be like this, one over four, 10 power minus nine. That means 0.25 times 10 power nine hertz, which is what? 250, 10 power six hertz. 10 power six is what? Mega. So, you know, like this, 10 power three hertz is basically K hertz. 10 power six hertz is basically what? Megahertz. 10 power nine hertz is what? Gigahertz. So if somebody telling you, my processor Intel i9 running is 1.4 gigahertz. That means you know the crystal inside your processor is basically one over this, it will tell you the, the duty cycle. Professor, I have a question. Um, yeah. How, how do we know that the gates are always measured in uh, nanoseconds? Like, uh, it's just... uh, most likely the most likely the TTL family is by nanosecond. Oh, it's just the like manufacturer. Yes, it's a, from the factory. Okay. You get it from the manual. Okay, thank you. Why in the twenty three hundred lab? What you are doing? You open the sheet and you look. Oh, I connect this. I connect this, and you will find the timing there. It's called response time. What is response time? I ask you a question. I calculate how many minutes it takes for you to answer the question. That's your response time. Same thing, you know, I put the input, I look to my watch, hey, it takes nanoseconds. You know, this is the response time for this uh, gate. Sounds good? Sounds Everybody good. on the same page? Now I will tell you the next story about clock. The clock have two things. One is called level. Another one is called what? Edges. So we have level and we have edges. How many level we have? We have two levels. We have high and we have low. Where are those levels? I will go here and I will make what? I will make it like this is my high and this is my low. Those are the two edges I have in the clock. And they are repeating itself, right? On, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, right? Then what are those edges? Edges is a little bit tricky. So I want you to, you know, follow me, okay? So edges are gonna be what? So you're gonna go like this. We have something that's called positive edge. Positive edge, what is positive? When you go from low to high, it's not immediate. It takes time, right? While you're charging. Like, you know, you already, you know, here's my cup. I went into the, you know, to the fountain and I start filling water, right? There is an amount of time it takes until I fill this cup, right? That will be the, the edge, basically, you know? So look, you know, here is the edge, look. Because I went from the low to the high. So I'm talking about this part. This part is called what? It's called positive edge of the clock. Or they call it what other books, they call it rising edge. Which it makes sense, you're rising from the low to the high. Where is the second edge? When I start, you know, I didn't like the water, so I opened the cup and I dumped it in the fountain. You know, I don't like it. You know? So I would just go ahead and say, you know, 
those guys in California, if they don't give me good water. So I will go ahead and dump it. So I dump it from what? From the high to the low. And that's what's called, it's called falling edge. And other book, they call it negative edge. So here, falling edge. And some other people, what they call it, what negative edge. So question, how many edges do we have? Two. Two, raising, falling. You can call it positive, negative <laughs> edge, right? How many levels do we have? Two. Two, two levels. Right? What is the most important thing people use for the flip-flop edges? They don't care about what levels. Again, so if I look Professor? at it, yes, sir. Sorry. So when we have one T, how many edges do we have? Two or three? Where's three? Uh, no, here is one and here's two. Okay. That's it. Thank you. And it's repeated, right? One, two, one, two, one, two, one. Two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now we have something to learn. How the flip-flop as an element using time is work. It works every inch. So there is flip-flops using positive edge. There is flip-flop using negative edge. No matter what is this flip-flop. So let's look at it, right? Look at this. So symbol-wise of the flip-flop, I don't know, you know, I'm not gonna make you a specific one. I'm just making the clock itself, right? So if I have come into the clock, I have to do it like this. What does it mean? It means this device is actually performing a reporting output every positive edge. What does it mean? I look here, it works here, it works here, it works here. And from here to here, there is time, right? That time is the time until it will finish. No. Ah, you know, I'm filling water. Ah, I finish, I fill water, I finish, I fill water, I finish. Okay. So what about there is other family of devices? There is other family of devices is actually using negative edge. How can we do it like this? Okay, that's something completely new, right? We learn there is something that's called clock. It has a specific what conditions and specification. We have to follow the specification. Do you guys agree? Yep. Okay. On off equal each other's it's in total divided by two. Right? If this happened, this is clock. Then if it's clock, one over this time period, which is the duration cycle, is called what? Frequency. Then we will come into the how many, what is the anatomy of the entire clock? There is two levels, on and off, or you know, high and low. And there is our two levels, which is um, no, uh, edges, I'm sorry, which is a positive edge. I'm going from the low to the high, or negative edge, I'm going from the high to the low. Other books, they call it falling and rising. So I'm rising from the low to the high, I'm falling from the high to the low, right? Then coming out of this, they build generation of devices which is storing data like a latch, but is involving time. One is using as a symbol like this, that's actually a positive edge. If you have the circle inside the triangle, that means you're negative edge. So far so good. So you can actually look at it like this, you know, I have here. Now we can come and say, this is my positive, my positive, my positive. Now I can come and say, this is my uh, negative, negative, negative. Some of the books, you know, when you will use it in a table, will tell you it like this. 
this is positive and this is negative. So this is pause, this is negative. Everybody agree? Yes, sir. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, the negative edge or the falling edge has a circle, has a little circle? Here. Yes. Look. OK. There's a, there's a triangle, look, triangle, and then inside the triangle, there's a circle. OK. Because The other one is just, you know, a triangle. OK. So usually the circle's inside the triangle, because I think I've seen some where the circle's outside. But usually it's inside. You right? can make it. Yeah, you can make it outside. It's like, you're, you're right. So some books do it like this, look. Okay. It's also okay. negative edge. Thank you. You're welcome. So everybody agrees with me? So we kind of stop here today. And then, you know, we will move to the next fantastic flip-flop, which is basically a modification of the SR latch to be SR flip. -flop. So that means SR latch involving what? Flip-flop. Hmm. Involving clock, I'm sorry. So gonna be latch involving clock. Let me tell you something so you can think about it the rest of the night. It's like, you know, when it's positive, there is a latch. When it's negative, there is a latch. That means flip flop, how many latch, two latch. Oh, I see, yeah. Okay, look. Yeah. So by this way, I can say thank you guys. I enjoyed the time and, you know, hopefully you guys are enjoying also the course and the class. And we will talk next time. So God bless you. Stay safe. Keep in touch. Thank you. God bless Good night. You. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. By the way, Professor, just wanted to give you a heads up. I emailed yes, you. Tell me, tell me. Yes, you emailed me. One second. Oh, I will look at it, okay? Yeah, so um, yes. like I was saying, uh, just wanted to make sure that we have the meeting set up. By the way, you're still recording. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. Yeah.